The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines evolution as a process of continuous change from a lower, simpler, or worse to a higher, more complex, or better state. As a species, we have evolved to overcome obstacles in our environment. We developed a common tongue and a written language in which we were able to communicate and share information with one another. Fast forward in time and civilizations were built and libraries developed. Individual books came together to create a collective of information. This information needed to be secured and protected as not all information was meant to be public. Much like ourselves, the internet, which is a series of networked computers and devices, have also evolved throughout the years. Policies and procedures were developed to govern how network devices would be able to interact and communicate with one another. In the early days of the internet, security was not so much a concern. How could we have dreamt that the internet would one day become the largest collective of information the world has ever known? My name is Kenneth Kate, and this is my TED Talk presentation on migrating from IPv4 to IPv6 for INFS 754 network security and intrusion detection here at Dakota State University. Today, we will be going over the internet and getting a better understanding of the foundation in which it was built. We will look at an aging protocol in which our current network computers and devices communicate with one another, and then take a deeper look at a newer and more developed protocol in which we are slowly migrating to. We will also take a look at a new security protocol and some of the challenges we will face ahead of us when migrating from the old protocol to the new. The inception of the internet was developed by a few, but the evolution of the internet is guided by the many. First up, Internet Protocol version 4. In the beginning, man created IPv4, and it was good. In order to connect to the internet, each device must have an internet protocol address assigned to it. This allows the device to communicate with other network devices and lets the internet service provider know where to route the traffic it receives. This system is called the internet protocol system and is designated IPv4. It was first deployed in 1981 and has a 32-bit address pool. What do I mean when I say 32-bit address pool? This means the pool of available IP addresses that can be leased out to network devices is 2 to the 32nd or 4,294,967,296 unique IP addresses. That number may seem like quite a large number indeed, which is exactly what our forefathers in computing had thought. However, with the exponential growth of the internet, we have all but depleted those IP addresses. Next up, Internet Protocol version 6. The future of IPv6 is before us. Freedom from the shackles of address space. As the world continues to grow and more and more devices are being connected to the internet, the number of allocable IP addresses continues to dwindle. What are we to do? How can we evolve to overcome the obstacles set before us? Long comes IPv6 to the rescue. IPv6 was officially deployed in 1999, just before the turn of the millennium. Although deployed, its adoption by ISPs and other product vendors has been shortcoming. IPv6 gave us an increased address pool that is 128 bit in size. This essentially gives us 340 undecillion IP addresses. Yes, you heard me right. We actually have a word to describe that large of a number. But let us take a moment to put that into perspective. If our current pool of 4.3 billion 
IPv4 addresses were represented by the solid size of a golf ball. The new 340 undecillion address space would be about the size of the sun. Now that's pretty large. Internet Protocol Security Benjamin Franklin once said, Those who surrender freedom for security will have, nor do they deserve, either one. IPsec was originally designed and de developed to be used with IPv6, but has since been engineered to provide security for both IPv4 and IPv6 network standards. One of IPv4's design flaws was that it lacked any type of native mechanism for ensuring data privacy and security during network transmission. Data transmission between two endpoints usually occurs through a series of unknown networks, where any information being transmitted is subject to interception or even being maliciously changed. This is where IPsec comes into play. Operation of IPsec in both versions of the Internet Protocol Standard are similar in design. IPsec uses cryptographic security services to protect communications over Internet Protocol networks. Some of the features that IPsec supports is data authentication, data encryption, data integrity, and network level peer authentication, as well as replay protection. IPsec was developed by the Internet Engineering Task Force and supports the secure exchange of packets at the IP layer. IPsec supports two encryption modes, which include transport and tunnel. Currently, IPsec is widely used to encrypt data during transport for virtual private networks. Migrating from IPv4 to IPv6, where the old meets the new. The transition to IPv6 will take place over the course of many years. During this transition, both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses will be used in parallel. All network devices currently support IPv4, but some new network devices also support IPv6. As time goes on, more and more devices will support IPv6. Many of these devices will support dual stacks, where they will simultaneously support IPv6 and IPv4. IPv4 currently supports Network Address Translation, or NAT, but IPv6 does not need such a service. Although it may be comforting to administrators to have NATs in IPv6, the fact of the matter is that they aren't needed. They do not provide any added security. The statefulness of a firewall provides security, not the translation of network addresses. The transition of a network from IPv4 to IPv6 must be carefully planned. New hardware must be purchased and implemented, and internet service providers must support this new standard in order for end users to benefit from its increased capabilities. Finally, Let's take a look at the challenges ahead of us and the obstacles we must overcome. For widespread implementation of IPv6 to take effect, we must have our ISPs and hardware vendors support this new protocol. Thorough testing will become necessary when dealing with the stability and security of a redesigned network. Every network is unique in its design and will require extensive testing to make sure we iron out all the kinks and bugs in order to make our IPv6 networks as secure as our current IPv4 networks. Lack of training and IPv6 security knowledge will lead to poorly designed security policies. This will, in turn, lead to prolonged adoption time of IPv6 until those security policies are equal to those or better than those of their IPv4 counterparts. Increased training will help network and security professionals in hardening their IPv6 networks. Another issue will revolve around software implementation of code design for IPv6. Software bugs will be found within networking libraries and drivers. Technologies such as virtualization and voice over IP 
could also be vulnerable due to the new standard. The solution to this is testing, testing, and yep, more testing. A test network and a comprehensive test plan will expose defects in current code and help to create more secure code and applications. The internet is always evolving, and with it comes changes at all levels. Eugene Spafford, a professor of computer science at Purdue University, once said, the only truly secure system is one that is powered off, cast in a block of concrete, and sealed in a lead-lined room with armed guards. While this may be true, a system or network that is powered off does us little good. Humanity is ever evolving, and so is the collective of networks we call the internet. With IPv6 and IPsec, we are pushing forward in the right direction, both in terms of advancement and security, but we must continue to be innovative and push the boundaries of technology even further. Thank you.